Do you want to bring earmarks back? Yes. So explain to us exactly how this is not enhancing corruption or what exactly you think earmarks would give us that Barack Obama didn't think they would. So uh, if you're in Congress, right now, I, I, I think Congress's national approval rating is approximately 12% or something along those lines. Like, like no one likes the job that they're doing. And if you're an individual congressperson, um, back in the day when the majority leader came in and was like, hey, we're going to try and pass this bill, they'd look at it and be like, you know, I'd be more receptive to this bill if this museum in uh, my district got, uh, you know, money for renovation. Um, and so then they had this, like, horse trading that went on, and then it made it more possible to do good things, uh, you know, or just get work done in Congress. But now because of the incentives that are set up, if I go in and I'm just, if I just go and I essentially just kneecap every legislation and say I'm going to stand on principle, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that, then there's no, um, th there's no room for negotiation and your incentives aren't there to actually uh, be a team player with your party. Whereas in the day, the incentive to be a team player was frankly your district would get some goodies. Um, now you can look at those goodies and say those goodies are a waste of taxpayer money. Or you can look at the goodies and say, apparently, the goodies were necessary to have a higher functioning legislature. Um, and every once in a while, the goodies that people brought back to their district might actually have been a good thing. And so I've taken the latter stance, where if you look at our seized up democracy or, or legislature, you have to look at it and say, why can you not get anything done? Why do only 12% of Americans approve of you? And part of that is that they can't negotiate with each other anymore because if the, the person who's sponsoring the legislation wants to get you on board, they can't offer you any goodies anymore. Um, so it turns out I'm a fan of goodies. Uh, and and, you can, and uh, it's one of those things where it's like a cost of this, bit, this much to enable like this much of potential benefit. Okay, so the standard skepticism about that among reformers goes something like this. Yeah, that's a happy story about goodies because it's about leadership handing out goodies in order to get laws passed in Congress. But there's another way goodies might be handed out. For example, you might say, geez, you know, if we could get a bunch of money from the boards, board of directors of this university, we might find a earmark could go to support research in that university. So the charge about earmarks was that they were a kind of corruption. They were a kind of way in which let members of Congress could shake down private people um, or interests or businesses that wanted these goodies so that they would channel money into the campaign. So is that not a problem or is that a problem you're gonna solve in other ways too? Yeah, so certainly you don't want to open the door to blatant corruption or uh, influence peddling uh, along those lines. But I think that there's a way to bring back earmarks while also uh, putting guardrails up to say, look, you can't be trading campaign contributions for access to goodies or you can't be personally enriching yourself or people that you know. Um, but to me, those are two separate issues uh, and that you can hopefully have intelligent guidelines to keep it from getting out of control the way it has at, at least some proportion of the time uh, been in the past. Okay, let's try that again. Um, <clears throat> let's say there are two related issues because let's take the first issue we're talking about. If you had a non-corrupt way of raising money... Yeah, yeah, it's true. Okay, you can finish the sentence then, right? <laughs> yeah, so if you have a non-corrupt way of, of, of raising money, then uh, I don't need to bring you the goodies in order to get money back because as long as I represent my um, constituents ably, then they'll give me the money, and then whether the university is trying to do some kind of back-scratching, it, it, it doesn't actually affect me. Yeah. So this is, I think, a really important insight. I don't think any other politician is defending earmarks, but I think they're defensible as long as you also make at the very top of your list of what you're talking about doing, fixing the corrupt way that we fund campaigns. Then, then I think they could be defensible. Okay.